What up, players? It's Walmart's Tay up in this mode. Today we're going to be painting up to this stage, the washes, a Nurgle Death Guard Plague Marine. So here are the different paints that you're going to be needing as we begin this journey. Step one, rack hard flesh. Then step two, Nurgling Green. Then picking out the details we use. Lead Belcher, Abaddon Black, Baldazar Gold, and I think that's it. And then we get into our washes, and the washes are Seraphim Sepia, Agrax Earthshade, and Lamian Medium. Hope you guys enjoy this little tutorial. Maybe you could play it in the background while you're doing your own work. Again, I don't have any music going on, so just pop in your favorite music track to uh, play in the background. And you can play this just as a ramble and uh, background noise while you are doing your own work for your own uh, painting projects. Hope you guys enjoy it, and we'll see you in the next video. All right, let's get started painting our Death Guard of Nurgle Plague Marine. Now, I am using the model that I built for the unboxing of the conversion kit, which is a Forge World Death Guard torso and Chaos Space Marine everything else converted, uh, clipped away the arms and reposed them so that the bolter, instead of being slung across the chest, is more open so we could see all this awesomeness. And this one is open to the side. It's the same hand that should be holding the bolter, but instead he's holding a blight grenade. In this case, used as, or the piece is actually a head from the Plague Bearers kit. So that answers any questions out of the way. For those of you who are still wondering, it's a piece of cork I get from my local arts and crafts store. And I'm gonna be using some poster tack to stick it onto the base. The base is also cork that I just glued onto the base and I pinned my Plague Marine onto. Got my wet palette here for all of my colors. And the goal is today we want to get our guy to this level, which is my test model up to this point. So greenish looking armor, gold trim, silver and black details. With washes. I think once the washes get on it, it looks really, really good. So, first color we're going to be using is Rackarth Flesh. And we're just going to be painting over the entirety of this model. For some reason, my Rackarth flesh is really, really weird. I don't know why, but it gets really uh, streaky, I guess. It might be time to get a new pot. So you're just going to be using a big brush and painting over the entirety of the model. Let's zoom out a bit. The Death Guard has always struck me as one of the more interesting chapters, or legions rather. You see so many people, even before Forge World came out with their awesome heresy era conversion, or not conversion kits, but their heresy era kits, full space marine kits, a lot of people converted their own legions of the first founding, and Death Guard was one of the ones that was really, really up there. Because I guess they had a very distinctive style, they had these spiked helmets, the Crusade era Mark III helmets uh, with the grill on the front, and they're very evocative, as Sean would say. So a lot of people liked to figure out how to build them using a mix mash of different kits. And a lot of conversion studios, hobby studios out there, made some, some decent coin producing knight helmets with the grills on the front and different conversion kits that would allow you to take a Space Marine, or a Chaos Space Marine maybe, and build a 
Death Guard, Plague Marine, but before in the pre-heresy days, the Loyalist days, we'll call it. Oops. That looks like my the cork on my base here is about to be retired. Post attack, which I use to secure my guys, can be bought at any store, department store. We've got longs here in Hawaii, but you've got, you know, CVS, Kohl's, not Kohl's, CVS, um, Pharmacy, Walgreens, Walmart on the mainland, um, e even any arts and crafts stores. We'll sell it. Just look for poster tack. Ask them for poster tack or blue tack, depending on where you are in the world. Okay, we're going to let this guy sit for a little bit, and then we're going to come back. The next color you're going to need is Nurgling Green. So make sure you've got that ready, and we'll be right back once this dries. Okay, this is gonna be a super quick step. We're just taking our Nurgling Green and we are pretty much dry brushing. I wouldn't call it a dry brush because it's not gonna create that kind of dusty effect. You want it on your brush. You wanna make sure that you get most of it off onto the wet palette there, but uh, you want a pretty full coverage. So the reason why we don't start with this is because Nurgling Green is a layer color and it's very thin. So you can see I didn't even thin this down with water because the layer paints separate so easily. Just putting it onto a wet palette and spreading it out is enough to oops, get it to separate. But you do want it to cover and give a nice green effect to the armor. You want it to be as smooth of a coverage as you can. For the backpack, because there are different backpacks for the Chaos Space Marines, um, you can choose what you're going to cover in the green and what will later be painted silver or gold. And you just want to make sure it's not splotchy at all. And like I said, this is a converted model, but if you do this on a regular Chaos Space Marine, you will uh, be able to achieve the same kind of painted effect so that you can tell your opponent that they are Plague Marines. You don't have to have a this actual model, or you don't have to actually own the converted space Chaos Space Marine Plague uh, Death Guard kit. If you just tell your opponent, you know, you painted up your Chaos yeah, Space Marines in this color scheme, and they're going to represent your Death Guard or your Plague Marines just to play test the rules or to use them in a game. They should be fine. That's the great thing about being able to paint and choose your paint schemes. You can use that to differentiate what the different uh, troops in your army are. Okay, so we're going to let that dry, and then we're going to come back and we are going to paint on the details. To get these details, you're going to need Balthazar Gold. You're going to need Lead Belcher, and you are going to need, uh, where is my Abadabon Black. So uh, we'll let, like I said, we'll let this dry for a little while, and then we'll come right back. I'm going to take my lady boss to eat sushi now. Bye! Okay, now you guys, at this point, oops. What we're going to do is we're going to paint the details on before we do our, our wash. So you want to get the first major color you want to get out of the way is Lead Belcher. 
And I say this because the gold details are going to be the hardest ones to paint just because there's so much, they're so fiddly and um, you might lose your mind because I almost did. So I, I think painting the silver ones on first is going to help a lot. So we're going to paint the bolter here in Lead Belcher. Man, I so I spent like all night last night trying to finish painting the uh, the whole squad. I kind of did as a test as a test model because uh, I wanted to try a bunch of different techniques. And in the end, I decided to try using all of the technical paints. And it's going to be I think a really fun thing to use. So if, if you don't have the technical paints, I'm going to give you also their equivalents that you can use. But um, yeah, if you've got the new technical paints that they came out with, then uh, it's, it's going to be a fun way to break them in, I think, using them on these Chaos Space Marines. Okay, the other parts that are silver I painted are these little grills in his leg armor. as well as these wires coming down out of the front of his armor. If you uh, don't have these, if you're using a regular Chaos Space Marine, instead of these Forge World converted ones, a good tip would be to use the Gale Force 9 copper rope wire to uh, make your own convert up your own disgusting wires leaking out the front. For the back I always like to do these pieces in silver, the little vents. And then uh, we'll do these blades here. A good tip that I like to give for painting to a beginner is to Look at the model from uh, the six different angles that you would if you were if it was a piece, if it was a, a dice a six sided dice. So you if you look at it straight front, straight ahead, then especially for a model like a Space Marine, which has uh, not too many weird crazy angles, and it's humanoid. So I'm looking at it from the front, I'm going to paint the front of these blades. If you look at it from either side, then you've got like the, the sharp bladed parts. You look at it from the back, then you are painting it kind of flat from the bottom and from the top. So hopefully that, that helps you guys. Uh, I also like to paint this little circular part in the center. Now you've got two different kinds of Chaos Space Marine backpacks, depending on which when you've painted or you've uh, glued on your model. So the other type is this one with um, the little holes in in the middle. So for this one, the silver, I painted the wires and the vent and uh, these these two little or the four little um, exhaust ports at the bottom. All right, back to our guy. Now we're gonna take Abaddon Black. And we're gonna work our way from the bottom. Starting with the, f the legs or the feet. They've got these little wires here, little tubes. So paint those, oops. You wanna check if they're on both sides. Some, some of the legs have them on both sides, but some of them only have them on one. Also, here in the back of the leg. 
you might notice that he's on cork instead of a regular base. So what I did was I just took a cork board, which you can find at any arts and crafts store, and I broke off pieces, little pieces of cork. Um, a cork board, for those of you who don't know, is kind of like what they use for bulletin boards and stuff. At schools or in, in office buildings. I'm just going to take them off. And I built, broke off little pieces and popped them onto it. The way you do that is you take a drill, a little drill or a pin vise. And in this case, I used this guy. And I think Games Workshop sells something like this, but I think this one was, I bought at a arts and crafts store as well. And then um, P3, a modeling company that has also a lot of uh, paints, a paint range, and they sell primer also. They also sell these kind of packages of brass rods and uh, appropriate sized drill heads. So you get those on and you um, can match it like that. So what I'm painting now is the little joints in the armor. Some of them have, you're able to find them easier than others, but they're kind of like in the elbows and in the back of the knees, down here where the legs meet the, the torso. And oh, the last thing you're going to paint in black is the visor of the helmet. If you're using a regular Chaos Space Marine, then um, his eyes. Okay, now, I guess that's it. We've delayed the inevitable long enough. We're going to have to paint the gold details. So you're going to get your Balthazar gold. And this is the most tedious part, but um, it's really, really worth it, I think. It really gives your, your Death Guard a good, a good trim. So we're going to paint the trim of the armor, starting with the toes, or the feet, the bottom, the sole of his boots. I like to go just straight across, uh, but you could also feather. And what I like to do for these guys is paint a solid stripe across the plates. So I'm not sure if they're, this is accurate to Space Marines and Chaos Space Marines or not, but um, it kind of breaks up where the plates are for me, and so that's why I do it. And you paint up the leg. I think a lot of people out there were really hoping for the Chaos Space Marines to get a new chosen box. Um, kind of just because the, the ones in the Dark Vengeance kit are so good. And their current Chaos Space Marines kit is so dated. Especially after the Space Marines got a whole new tactical squad kit. I think a lot of the Chaos Space Marine players out there were feeling a little bit gypped. Oh, especially the players who are really into the gaming side after this loyalist quote unquote Space Marines got chapter tactics. I know a lot of Chaos Space Marine Legion players out there in my area were bummed. They're like, why didn't they give the legions something like chapter tactics? So 
So trim of the armor. I found this to be the the step that took the longest for me. Because again, you want to get all the different angles. Yeah, maybe I just go up, up the body and then paint the other side off camera so this video doesn't take so long. So mainly leg armor, gauntlet armor. The trim of the gauntlet is usually gold. And um, if your gauntlet has special decorations on the flat part of the back of the hand, like spikes or a skull or um, even little little studs I've seen on the hands, then that's what you're going to paint in gold. Then shoulder pads. Now shoulder pads are tricky because they've got an underside that you your you or your opponent opponent may never see. They've got an inside that you or your opponent may never see, but I just like to be thorough, I guess. If you're using a conversion bit, your model might have a an emblem on the chest with the symbol of Nurgle on it, so that also gets plated and their helmet oh this guy's got a horn so the rest of these guys if you're using the game the forge world conversion kits have these horns on the top of their helmets like per prussians so you just paint that but it looks like this one is an actual horn so i'm gonna have to paint that as a horn later fun now for the backpack What I like to do in gold is the rim of these vents. This arrow in the middle. The uh, inside rim. I kind of did this for the, the Night Lords too, I think doing this is, you know, it's going to take you an extra couple minutes, but in the end, like I said, it's really going to make your guys pop on the battlefield. Um, 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 um. These little spiky bits. And that's it. Okay, so let's get these other ones and I'm just gonna let the camera run and when the uh, memory card fills up, then uh, it'll cut and what I'll do is I'll just keep going until I'm done and then pick back up where the next step comes in, which is gonna be the last one for this video the washes. Now you might mess up and get some gold paint onto the green areas by accident and if you do then don't don't worry about it. It's 
funny because the the green areas are they might look very bright like they, they definitely did to me when I was trying this color scheme out on the test models I tried a bunch of different steps and techniques and this is the simplest one that I could distill I guess you could say there were other ones that I tried that was like you start with the rack art flesh and then you highlight it up in gray and then glaze it with way watcher and different different shades but that just came out looking very splotchy and watery this is the one that I felt looked the most like legitimate because the original Death Guard armor is supposed to be white or a, a dirty cream and then after their time in the in the warp when they came out and they were all chaosified then it had become this nasty putrid green color. The light armor is also going to be, be giving you a lot of um, just a lot of a lot to work with because you've got these all these symbols on it like the arrows and the spikes and the points. But just stick through it. I think for me when I was painting the trim on these, I I took the longest with the the leg armor and the backpacks. See, it's not hard. It's just tedious. It's not difficult. But you just gotta make sure that you're going nice and slow with your brush. Across the bottom, across the front. And one swipe up the first plate. It's almost like a little gold stripe. Um, missed some vents the lead belcher or a little silver silver piece right here in the back of the leg armor is another and I believe that was it so we're gonna look at the last details we want to get oh here we go um, the helmets. All these conversion helmets are a little bit different from each other, so I'm picking out the details in gold now. Right, this uh, Balthazar gold. So this helmet looks like it has gold studs. So I'm going to see if I can dab a little bit of gold on each one. That's that. I'm going to take uh, Rack Hearth Flesh now, paint the Blight Grenade. If your Death Guard model does not have this, then just skip this part. Gross. Ooh, gross. Okay, any last minute things you want to do? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, this guy has a wire sticking out of him. So I'm going to paint that in black as well, at the front of his face grill. I was thinking I would paint it red, but there's going to be so much red on the model from the Blood for the Blood God that any wires we find, let's do in black so that you can obviously tell what it is. So the first wash you're going to use or shade is Seraphim Sepia. This is going to go all over the model. I 
The trick with these shades is uh, you got to make sure that it spreads evenly, but that it doesn't pool anywhere. So don't just slap it on and keep moving because otherwise you'll leave some very obvious watermarks. And you come back later and you'll be like, well, I don't remember doing this. You just have to check all the different angles. When doing shades, I like to stay at one section and then um, one part of the model before moving along. So, f for example, I mean, th that sounds very simple, but instead of going from head to toe, from top to bottom, I will focus only on the helmet or only on the torso first. In this case, I, I started with the torso, really, and then did the arms, and I'm slowly making my way around, checking to make sure that the shade is covered. I'm going to take it off the, the cork for now. The cork and poster tack is one of the best things. I used to paint night goblins, so much night goblins for my orc and goblins army. I used to only play fantasy and I used to only collect night goblins and those 20 millimeter bases, painting, you know, 40, 60 of those guys is just a nightmare. So uh, you don't have to use a you don't have to use cork. You can use an old paint bottle, and uh, or a prescription bottle or anything that's kind of a similar shape that you can get your wrap your hand around easily. And then the post attack is really what what secures it. I had never seen post attack before. I saw it on Girl Painting's channel, and I'd never seen poster tack before, so when I saw her using it and she kind of explained how, how she did it, I just thought, ah, dear goodness gracious, that is brilliant. Okay, you don't want streaks. You don't want puddles. So when you're done, you just want to double check that it's all all good, and you can leave it to dry for a little bit. We're going to let this dry for just a second, and then we're going to come back and do the Agrax Earthshade wash. So while this is drying, you're going to need Agrax Earthshade and this. I'm getting a call from Jamaica. What's that about? Yo, man, you've been wanting to switch. Your telephone carrier. Show up. Gonna be wanting your Agrax Earthshade as well as Lamian Medium. Okay, so get those ready. Oops. You see how this made a put puddle when I put the se Seraphim Sepia in there? Just get those out. All right, so we'll be right back. All right, now we're going to do our second shade, and this shade is gonna be Agrax Earth Shade. And uh, we're gonna cut it down a little bit with some Lamian Medium. So I've got my Agrax Earth Shade here, and I've got my Lamian Medium here as well. And I'm gonna put them both on my wet palette kind of mix them up. The point is, Agrax Earthshade by itself is a very dark, very thick wash. And so what that means is that when you put it on your model, it's probably going to dull down a lot of the, a lot of the color. But with a little bit of Lamian Medium, it helps to, or I found it helps to, I, I don't even know if I'm using this right, but I found that it helps to um, make the color, it, it diffuse it a little bit, diffuse some of that color, make it not as as just really dark and thick and so that's really you know good for us there. yeah so i've been i've had the the technical paints for a while now 
I bought them all together. I didn't know what to use them on. Uh, I kind of wanted to use them on much of the same model and I didn't have something that I thought was appropriate but yeah when I started using them on on my test models they, they all came together really really nicely using all of the technical paints even the the earth one so the cracked earth paint so I'm really really happy for that I'm gonna be able to show that off as soon as we do some highlighting Uh, you want your brush to also be able to pick up some Lamian medium whenever you can because if you see that the, the Agrax Earthshade gets on a little bit too thick it starts to look really dark like here if you see on the right of this guy's leg armor just put some Lamian medium on your brush and then put it on and it should spread it out and diffuse the color. White Spirit also works for this other kinds of paint thinner to thin down the paint um, Hopefully I'm using this correctly and I'm not giving bad advice. Any of you experienced painters out there or people who've used these kinds of painting mediums before, if you can chime in with some comments on on other ways to use Lamian medium. I've heard that also somebody commented on using them to put transfers on. If you don't want your transfer to look really bright and shiny when you put it on a model, instead of dipping it into water, dip it into the Lamian medium. Or another thing is to uh, put a coat of Lamian medium onto a transfer after it's been applied. I found that mixing it with your washes though is a great way to kind of spread spread the pigment of the washes out so it still has a pretty good coverage but will not streak and leave a very thick coat or thick covering and, and pool and make watermarks and all that kind of nasty stuff. So we're gonna let this dry and then when we come back we'll do some highlights and we'll add in all of the weathering, add some transfers on, all that good stuff. But thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the start of our Nurgle Death Guard Plague Marine for the project first founding that I'm doing. And we'll see you in the next video.